All right, my name is Elma from elmacain.com and over on LinkedIn, I've been publishing some articles about my clients and my niche, which is B2B SaaS writing in particular to that industry. So I thought I can share this with you about content writing for SaaS brands. And if you don't know what SaaS stands for, it's software as a service business. So these are intangible or digital brands online. There are lots of different types of SaaS and I work with a few different types of industries, analytical industries, growth revenue industries, email service provider industries, AI marketing industries, lots of different types around digital marketing. I'm also diving a little bit deeper into e-commerce writing as well. I thought I'd share some content writing tips for SaaS brands to help you as a freelance writer if you're interested in this type of niche that I'm in, which is SaaS writing. I start off in my post saying that I have been nose deep in researching SaaS companies. I've been working at getting to know these new companies that I'm seeing in my feed, that I'm hearing about from other writers, other marketers that I'm seeing on YouTube ads, in Instagram ads things like that where I want to get to know these companies more. So let's look at what SaaS writing really is to help you be a better freelance writer. The first thing about it, it is complex. You are dealing with something that you can't physically touch. You are dealing with sort of the tech behind the product or tool or service at times. If you're not familiar with different software programs, then I wouldn't suggest that you get into SaaS unless you really have a firm understanding of using these products. It could be as simple as using social media automation tools. I use Tail wind. Uh, back in the day, I was also using Buffer for social automation. I am familiar with that software program, which means that I can write about it if a client asks me to. I'm also familiar with using different SEO tools. At one point I was using SEMrush and now I'm using Ahrefs. I'm thinking about Surfer SEO as well. So the more tools that I become familiar with that I use in my business, the better SaaS writer that I will become because I'm learning the nuances of these tools. As I was mentioning, it is technical, right? You're gonna be breaking down complex software functionalities so that it's easier to digest when someone is reading it, that maybe isn't as tech savvy as you, right? So think about that. When I go to the Tailwind blog, I'm not looking for a user manual breakdown of the steps in a very technical way. For example, getting started with meta ads. This could be very technical, but you can look quickly at the table of contents here that they are walking a reader down this journey of maybe they're not too familiar with Meta. Maybe they just heard about it in a news program or they've heard about it through social media, but they're not familiar with exactly what it is. So understanding the basics helps someone that's new to this idea to better understand it. So they're breaking it down. So when you go to understanding, they first tell me that it's used to be called Facebook ads. I'm getting some reference to what this is. Okay. I've never heard of Meta ads, so they were known as Facebook ads. So that's what they're called now. Right, so I'm learning new terminology. I'm learning how it works for a business so that it leverages the massive user base of Facebook and Instagram to deliver targeted ads to potential customers on these features, on demographics, on interests, on behaviors. So it's breaking it down in a non-techie way that I can understand as a business owner. I want more, I want more information about my audience. What do they like? What are their interests? Who are they, right? So it's telling me in an easy way to understand. So that's what I mean by breaking things down into these components. And you can see they broke it down very nicely into understanding it, exactly what they are. So even diving deeper into it, understanding the ecosystem around this strategy, benefits, and then going into more logistical, setting it up. So how do you set this up? Well, you need objectives, you need to define your audience, and then you need to create ads, right? So it's telling me all this stuff and don't forget to monitor. And it goes into other aspects of this strategy of creating a meta ad. So that's what I mean when it's 
technical that you break it down. It also means identifying different use cases of a client software tool. For example, one tool's primary use case, let's say is lead funnels. And then with a secondary use case of being a customer relationship management tool. So as a freelance writer, you need to identify and use the key phrases and related keywords surrounding each use case. A client might ask you to write about lead funnels and then the next week write about customer relationship and management. What is the terminology around CRMs? What are people using around lead funnels? These are things that you need to become familiar with. If you don't, then you can research it. Oftentimes SaaS writing or SaaS businesses have a longer sales cycle. It takes longer for other business owners, other people to understand something that's intangible, that isn't something that they can grab and touch and look through. There are lots of touch points that a business needs to set up so that a prospect can go through that. So it might be thought leadership on LinkedIn that moves on to a webinar that they did or a podcast that they did, moving on to a free white paper that they promote on social media that goes into their email. So now they have emails from this tool, which leads them to a blog post. There are lots of different touch points that SaaS businesses set up for their users, their prospects. And that can take months, that can take a long time. There is a specific audience. So SaaS writing often targets a B2B audience, which means your content should cater to professionals and the decision makers in all the industries. So understanding their pain points, their challenges and goals to create that content. That tailwind post about meta ads is for business owners. It's not for a high school person. So oftentimes when I get approached by SaaS clients, I always take a look at what their business is and who they're targeting. And oftentimes I'm not their core user of the tool. I've never heard of the tool. I would never use the tool. At that point, I have to make a decision if I want to go forth with this so that I'm open to learning about their tool, open to who their audience is or not. Maybe it's just going to take me too much time to really become familiar with this tool. And I don't want to invest that time right now. So oftentimes I do get approached by companies that are not in my wheelhouse. They do other things. Their productivity tools. And I don't write about productivity, but they're approaching me. So should I be open to that? Maybe I should be open to that. Then I have a bigger client pool of SaaS clients in productivity tools, analytical tools, AI tools, SEO tools, email tools, all of that. But to work through this again, yeah, you gain the experience with the tools. You can also just leverage things like YouTube. You can sign up to a free trial of the tool. You can look at case studies, reviews of the tool. The, the information is there. You can also also look on LinkedIn to find the owner because they're going to be chatting up about the tool all the time. For example, Tyler Denk is the co-founder of Beehive and I follow him. So I get to see his posts. So if we go down to his posts, this pops in my feed oftentimes to see, okay, six weeks in 6K subs on my personal newsletter. Wow. Beehive is, is an email platform. So he's sharing his successes. And here's another massive update to the Beehive automation suite. Plus they also launch these. This gives me information about Beehive, what they are, what kind of functionalities they have to help me if I want to write for them down the road. They are a new company. They're not at the stage that I would approach them for, but they're here. And if I'm following them, maybe they might realize that they might end up seeing my post. If maybe if I write about them, I have written about Beehive, so they might get notified of that. So it's things like that where I am learning about a tool that I don't know anything about. Another aspect of SaaS writing is that it's often long form, but not always. A lot of the SaaS writing jobs say they want a long form writer, but the landscape of content is changing and you don't always need to write long form content. They say that because the topics at hand need that room to write about, right? So here's a big example of 647 best Instagram captions. It is a 54 minute read. <laughs> I have never written anything that long. I think the most I've written was probably 15 to 18 minutes of content. But some SaaS clients are ahead of the curve and they don't always need long form content. So so they'll give me a content brief that's around the 1800 word mark or 2000 word mark. 
So that tells me that the landscape of long form writing is changing and that's good, right? I need to be comfortable writing 3000 to 4000 words for a client at a time, as well as 15 to 1800 word blog posts. If I can make those my sweet spots, then it's easier for me to create the content and it, that doesn't take me 20 hours to create, right? So how do you succeed as a SaaS writer? Well, as I was mentioning or alluding, you do need to immerse yourself in this industry. So like I said, following the key players on LinkedIn, following them on Twitter, maybe going onto their email list, things like that. You want to stay updated with those trends, the technology, the best practices. Also start using those softwares in your writing process or in your business to see how they work. You want to hone your technical writing skills. This is something that is somewhat new to me. I, I do like writing about social media marketing and email marketing, which is not that technical. But if I really want to excel as a SaaS writer, I do need to look at the technical side of writing and how I can break that down and make it easier for someone to understand. A homework exercise that you can do is looking at the website copy of a SaaS brand. So here's Revenue Hero. They are a SaaS brand to help with inbound convergence. You can feed the copy into ChatGPT and have it come up with some topics for you based on what they learn about this website. So I have here, go ahead and use ChatGPT to give you the main points of a website copy. So give them the link if, if you're on the paid plan or give them aspects copy of the homepage and have it give you the key points and then blog post topics related to those key points. From that, I got five ways to boost B2B lead conversion with instant scheduling. This is a nice blog post for this company. How to streamline your lead management with effective campaign rerouting. Again, this tool probably does this. This tool also probably does this. So I'm writing about the tool with these types of blog posts, which will help that business get more leads. Make Make sure you understand the sales funnel. So know how to create the content that addresses different stages of the buyer's journey. All right, I recently wrote on LinkedIn about BOFU content, bottom of the funnel content. When you think of a funnel, especially B2B, there is top of the funnel content, middle of the funnel content, and bottom of the funnel content. Typically, businesses hire you for tofu content, but it's a good idea to become familiar with BOFU content. That's having a deep knowledge of the products of your clients. But as I was saying, there's different touch points about a product a customer goes through when deciding to purchase a software tool. So as a SaaS writer, it's your job to create this tofu or bofu content for your clients. And that's part of the sales journey of a prospect. You wanna focus on the benefits, right? You're highlighting the SaaS product that solves problems or adds the value for the user. Of course, if it makes sense. And there are some clients that want you to focus on the topic at hand and they will take care of the CTA for their product during the editing process. This happened to me with one of my newest clients. I wrote about a product and then they added their own CTA for their product at the bottom. Keep in mind about SEO and keywords. SaaS keywords are oftentimes competitive, but they're oftentimes niche specific, which means that they may not have a lot of traffic. So it's a good idea to conduct you know, keyword research when you're writing for clients, that you're optimizing your content to improve that search engine visibility. Now, most of my clients give me the keywords to use, but I also use Ahrefs and MarketMuse, those are SaaS tools, to give me a better landscape of the words and topics to discuss. Those are the things to help you become a SaaS writer or a better SaaS writer. Let me know if you're interested in more SaaS content to help you. I am writing more about that on LinkedIn and I can share that on YouTube as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next.